Good afternoon, everyone. We have gathered here to praise God and to witness to our faith as we celebrate the life of Beverly, Bev, Elizabeth, blank. We come together in grief, acknowledging our human loss. May God grant us grace that in pain we may find comfort in sorrow, hope, and in death, resurrection. Will you join me by standing as you are able in the responsive call to worship found in your bulletin, which are words from Paul's letter to the Romans. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No, in all things we are more than conquerors through the one who loved us. I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor things present nor things to come nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Give you a little time to find that in the blue hymnal, the blue hymnal, blue hymnal number 378. be seated and will you join me in prayer and then you'll be invited to offer the Lord's Prayer with me and following that we'll sing a song of prayer shepherd me O God beyond my wants and we'll sing that through four times let us pray loving and merciful God you heal the broken in heart. And to those who have no might, you increase their strength. You comfort the tired and the weary. 
And so day, today, almighty God, strengthen us in our weakness, calm our troubled spirits, dispel our doubts and fears. We thank you for Bev Blank, for the gift of her life, for the treasure that she was and for the treasure she continues to be in our memories and in your eternal heart. We give thanks that for, Beth, for Bev, death is past and pain has ended and that she has now entered the joy of the home you have prepared for her. We ask your peace and your comfort be with Marilyn and all of Bev's family and friends. Give us faith, Lord, to see beyond touch and sight and where vision fails, help us to trust your love, which never fails. May we bravely walk our earthly way and look forward to our glad reunion with Bev in eternity. And now let us offer the prayer Jesus taught his disciples saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures, he leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This time, uh, Wade, Bev's nephew, will be coming forward to speak, and then followed by Becky, um, Bev's and, and Marilyn's neighbor. Thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you all for being here and joining us in remembrance of my Aunt Beverly. I just want to say some, um, 
some remarks, kind of what she meant to me, and, and some memories, share some thoughts uh, as we reflect on her life today. Um, I think if you knew her personally, you know how much she loved animals. I think that was, that was clear. Uh, and it wasn't just from her rescue activities, from you know, your typical dogs and, and cats, but I, I think she had a long list she liked to tell about all the different types she had rescued, whether it's a raccoon or a, a deer that had been injured or a number of whatever she could help of different animals. She was always doing that for a number of years, even before uh, she moved back to Savannah years ago. Um, I know my oldest uh, brother, Hal, had visited her in California when he was little, and she had goats and a variety of things, and she just loved being around animals and taking care of them and always um, giving and, and doing what she could for others. Um, when I was growing up, she lived uh, in California or Nebraska, and she would come back in her RV to visit. And some of my favorite uh, memories was she would take me and my uh, two brothers to the Kmart on Victory Drive. Occasionally, not every time she came, but it was a big deal. And, and we would get to pick out some Matchbox cars off the shelf and uh, throw those in the cart. And those are, you know, when you're five years old, uh, and you get two or three of those. It was a big deal. So I, I was always... Uh, when I would see her, think, okay, <laughs> we're going to go get some more Matchbox cars, maybe. So uh, that was a good memory. Um, she was also a crafts, craftsman, uh, a very artistic art, arts and crafts ran in her family. Her mother was an artist. Um, and I remember receiving wallets and belts and different things she would, she would craft from leather. Um, so she was a, a maker. She was a creator. Um, I don't think there was anything she didn't think she could do if she put her mind to it. Uh, whether it was build a garage by herself, uh, she was a force to be reckoned with. When she put her mind to something, she was, she was um, amazing. I don't know where, honestly, she learned those things. It's not like she grew up uh, right in a family that was uh, surrounded by goats or chickens. She just picked those things up, and she, she figured things out, um, building things. She was just able to do a lot of things, and she was just a self-starter, and um, I admired that about her. She was, uh, she was strong in that aspect. Another thing I can remember from a very young age was she was a straight shooter, and uh, you knew where you stood. I, I like that. Sometimes as a child, you don't know. You try to read between the lines of what somebody's thinking, or should you or should you not do something. I always, uh, she treated me like a mini adult, and I uh, admired that. Maybe I got corrected <laughs> a few times, but you, you knew where he stood, and, and she was open, and so I, I really admired that. And I would say that was common uh, amongst her and her sisters. Uh, you know, they would speak their mind, and you, you knew where he stood. There was no doubt about that, so um, I, I, I have some of those traits myself, and I really uh, encourage that in the workplace, um, how that's a good trait, where people don't have to guess what somebody's thinking. They're just honest and open uh, with their thoughts. So that was another thing that, that stood out uh, with her. Um, she was a strong woman, uh, as I've mentioned before, comfortable with who she was. If there was an issue and you needed to talk about something, it felt like you could go to her and talk about anything. She would give you advice. It was a, uh, she moved back to Savannah, and uh, um, I'd talk to her about things. Uh, maybe there'd be a problem as a teenager with my parents, or we disagreed on something. She was somebody I could turn to to give kind of uh, unbiased, like I said, you knew where she stood, she wouldn't sugarcoat it, you could get a perspective, an outside perspective on things. So I, I really admired that um, from her. And she was a busy person. I don't think she, if she, you know, I was hearing um, stories earlier, right before I walked up, uh, even in the end when she was trying to rehab, how she would, she would try to walk every day or say she had walked every day, even if she, she hadn't, she was really trying. Uh, to get better, and she always was going to do something and had plans, and so she was a person of action, always uh, wanting to do something, to stay busy, um, and even to the end, she was a fighter. So I think that's what we, she would want us to remember of her, her caring, her volunteering, her giving, um, and strong person who was comfortable in her own skin and, and wanted everybody uh, to be the same. So thank you all uh, for joining us in remembrance of our, for her today.
Hi, I'm Bev's neighbor, Becky, and Marilyn's neighbor, and uh, I got to know Bev in her 60s era. <laughs> and um, I remember we got this piece of mail, and it said Bev blank, and I told Pete, I'm like, well, I think we can probably deliver this. It's someone on the street, right? I didn't even know it was the neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> like, we had not hardly ever met the neighbor before because he was a truck driver and trucking, so we might have waved at each other over the fence. So that day we delivered the mail, and I met Bev and got to learn, you know, she was definitely a lover of animals. She had chickens. Pete was starting to want to dabble in chickens, so he got lots of good advice from Bev on how to raise chickens, and he actually raise them to have for meat at some time, and I never thought I was gonna pluck a chicken, but she taught me how to pluck a chicken. <laughs> anyway, um, one of the things for Bev that I feel, you know, definitely a lover of animals. I loved her because she loved country music, which I love. She loved gin and tonics, which I love. She loved Mexican food, which I love. <laughs> <laughs> she made a great um, key lime pie, too, for dessert. We'd have her and Marilyn come over, and we'd do dominoes and dinner together, and sometimes a bonfire. And uh, I know some people probably thought she was a crazy cat lady because she did the cat rescue. Literally, she would get a cat, get it spayed and neutered, and let it come live with her for the rest of its life. And she actually named them, and she knew who they were. And, like, we'd go out, and she goes, oh, there's so-and-so, and there's Tommy, and... And uh, she really loved her, her animals. She was like the mother of all the animals. She even fed the raccoons so they wouldn't eat her chickens. So <laughs> thank God for old Roy. <laughs> but um, one of my funniest stories was, because we did like doing low country boiled dinners sometimes, you know. So one day she said, you know what, let's, let's go in and get 100 pounds of shrimp. And I'm like, Okay, she goes, yeah, we'll split it, and um, it's really cheap. And I'm like, okay, sure. And so we get this 100 pounds of shrimp, and then I get my 50 pounds. She has hers, and I go home, and I spent eight hours at the sink, deheading, cleaning, bagging it, freezing it. And I said to my husband, I said, if she ever offers me to get another 100 pounds of shrimp, tell me no. <laughs> that was a day I will never forget, but uh, it was funny. She's been a great neighbor. Um, a great neighbor, a great girlfriend, a great, great friend. And I have a poem that I'm going to read for her. What God hath promised. God hath not promised skies always blue, flower strewn pathways all our lives through. God hath not promised the sun without rain joy without sorrow, and peace without pain. God hath not promised we shall not know toil and temptation, troubles and woes. He hath not told us we shall not bear many burdens and many a care. But God did promise strength for the day, rest for the labor, light for the way, gate grace for the trials, help from above, unfailing sympathy, and undying love. And I'm going to miss her a lot. Thank you. Stanzas one, two, and five, abide with me.
Yes, you are. Is that to be? Yes, okay. Thank you. Take your time. Okay. <clears throat> Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. I'm so grateful to Billy, Randy, Candace, Ray, and Asbury Memorial Church for their support and help in planning this tribute to Bev. I would not have been able to do this without their loving support and guidance. Although she rarely attended in person, Bev loved Asbury and frequently watched it online. Thank you to all the friends and family who supported and loved Bev throughout the years. Thank you to Hospice of Savannah and my neighbor Becky Morales for your support at the end of her life. Thank you for the long distance support of and love of her nephews, Wade and Hal Davis, and their families. Her longtime partner, Bonnie McMullen, her friend, Richard Brown, and all the other angels that blessed her life. Bev was many things to many people. She was born in 1937. She was a strong woman at a time when women were not supposed to be strong. She had to fight a great deal of prejudice and discrimination. In spite of that, or because of that, she was very successful. She was a microbiologist. <clears throat> she was intelligent, kind, generous, loving, and compassionate. She wanted to save everyone and everything. She, she loved people and especially she loved animals. She saved countless numbers of dogs, cats, goats, sheep, squirrels, <laughs> chickens, baby birds, and some baby skunks. <laughs> she could not bear to see anything suffer and would do anything she could to save them all a good woman who fought the good fight until she could fight no more. I think all of you knew Bev in one way or another. I thank you for coming to remember and celebrate her life today. Bev made friends wherever she went and always wanted to hug them and tell them she loved them. She had a capacity for opening her heart to others, both humans, and animals that amazed me. She also loved to grow things and would constantly collect seeds to grow anything that she could. And I mean constantly. <laughs> she was a good cook and was always trying new things. She could build anything from her own plans and often did. She built chicken houses, carports, houses for the cats. I don't know that I've ever met anyone else with such a variety of interests and so much drive to pursue them. In these latter years, she could no longer do the things that brought her so much joy. It was hard for her to accept and caused her great sadness. She will be missed by me and many others I don't believe that our spirits ever really die, but her presence will be greatly missed. She left a wonderful legacy of love and kindness, and that is all any of us are asked to do. Now I'd like to read from The Course in Miracles, the epilogue. Forget not once this journey is begun, the end is certain. Doubt along the way will come and go and go to come again. Yet it is the ending is sure. 
No one can fail to do what God appointed him to do. When you forget, remember that you walk with him and with his word upon your heart. Who could despair when hope like this is his? Illusions of despair may seem to come, but learn how not to be deceived by them. Behind each one, there is reality and there is God. Why would you wait for this and trade it for illusions when his love is but an instant further on the road where all illusions end? The end is sure and guaranteed by God. Who stands before a lifeless image when a step away the Holy of Holies opens up an ancient door that leads beyond the world? You are a stranger here but you belong to him who loves you as he loves himself. Ask but my help to roll the stone away and it is done according to his will. We have begun the journey. Long ago, the end was written in the stars and set into the heavens with a shining ray that held it safe within eternity and through all time as well and holds it still unchanged, unchanging, and unchangeable. Be not afraid. We only start again an ancient journey long ago begun that but seems new. We have begun again upon a road we traveled on before and lost our way a little while. And now we try again. Our new beginning has a certainty the journey lacked till now. Look up and see his word among the stars where he has set your name along with his. Look up and find your certain destiny the world would hide but God would have you see. Let us wait here in silence and kneel down an instant in our gratitude to him who called to us and helped us hear his call. And then let us arise and go in faith along the way to him. Now we are sure we do not walk alone. For God is here and with him all our brothers. Now we know that we will never lose the way again. The song begins again, which had been stopped only an instant though it seems to be unsung forever. What is here begun will grow in life and strength and hope until the world is made an instant, is still an instant, and forgets all that the dream of sin has made of it. Let us go out and meet the newborn world, knowing that Christ has been reborn in it and that the holiness of this rebirth will last forever. We had lost our way, but he has found it for us. Let us go and bid him welcome, who returns to us to celebrate salvation and the end of all we thought we made. The morning star of this new day looks upon a different world where God is welcomed and his son with him. We who complete him offer thanks to him as he gives, gives thanks to us. The sun is still, and in the quiet God has given him, enters his home and is at peace at last. Whenever, whenever I was in Bev's presence, during that time, she would always look over to Marilyn and then say to me, God has really blessed me with having Marilyn in my life. Never failed, always made that point. 
And so we ask, we give thanks for that relationship. And thank you, Marilyn, for what you've done for so many. And uh, as somebody who's interested in spirituality and learning, thank you for your commitment to having people come together, to grow together. So thank you. Singer James Blunt has a remarkable music video of him singing a song called Monsters that is impossible to watch without getting a lump in your throat and a tear in your eye. It's about him saying goodbye to his father who was dying. Oh, before they turn off all the lights, I won't read you your wrongs or your rights. The time has gone. I'll tell you good night, close the door, tell you I love you once more. The time is gone. So here it is. I'm not your son. You're not my father. We're just two grown men saying goodbye. No need to forgive. No need to forget. I know your mistakes and you know mine. And while you're sleeping, I'll try to make you proud. So, Daddy, won't you just close your eyes? Don't be afraid. It's my turn to chase the monsters away. There are times in our life when a loved one is ill and suffering, and we have the same feelings that James Blunt conveys in that song. It's time to let go and say goodbye so your loved one can experience peace. It's always hard, but it's a little easier with someone who has had a long life and with someone who has had a good life. And Bev did. So we give thanks. But it's still hard to let go. Fortunately, there are other songs that remind us that this is really not the end. We're about to sing one of those songs in just a few minutes. One of our favorite songs here at Asbury called Hymn of Promise. It reminds us of the eternal mystery of life and death and life again. And to convey this message, the song beautifully uses the imagery of nature and creation that Bev loved so much. We'll sing it following the congregational prayer. And as we sing, let us remember the words of theologian and scientist Tehard de Chardin, who said, we are not human beings searching for a spiritual experience. We are spiritual beings having a human experience. We are eternal. We'll be with Bev again. One of the things I really like about James Blunt's song is that the son acknowledges his responsibility to live out his own life, to make his father proud, to chase the monsters away, to pursue a life of goodness. And when we lose a loved one, let us grieve, but let us also acknowledge that we don't have much time on this earth before we're with our loved one again. And we need to make the most of this precious gift we've been given of being in this world. And so let us go forth to live well the rest of our days on this planet. I'm not your son. I'm not, you're not my father. We're just two grown men saying goodbye. No need to forgive, no need to forget. I know your mistakes and you know mine. And while you're sleeping, I'll try to make you proud. So daddy, won't you just close your eyes? Don't be afraid. 
It's my turn to chase the monsters away. Will you join me now in the prayer that's in your bulletin? Accept our thanks, dear God, for your gift of life, for all that you gave us in our birth, for all that you give us in the richness of our journeys. We give you thanks. And all this we bring to you, our God, from our life to your life, O God. Accept our hopes and our promises, all our hopes that life may yet be filled with purpose and its purposes fulfilled. All of the promises we make to ourselves, to one another, and most certainly and inwardly to you, all these we bring to you, O God, from our life to your life, O God. Our memories of Bev Blank, our gratitude for her friendship, and for the multitude of ways she influenced our lives in your church, for your promise of eternal life, and for our faith that tells us we will one day be with Bev again. All these we bring to you, O oh God, from our life to your life, O oh God. Amen. Stand as you are able for hymn number 707. There's a spring that waits to be unrevealed until its season. Something God alone can see. There's a song in every silence seeking word and melody. There's a dawn in every darkness bringing hope to you and me. From the past will come the future, what it holds a mystery, unrevealed until its season, something God alone can see. In our end is our beginning, in our time infinity. In our doubt there is believing, in our life eternity. In our death a resurrection, at the last a victory unrevealed until it sees on something God alone can see. God bless you all. I hope you will come and join us in our social hall named Holiday Hall for our, our grand matriarch here, Virginia Holiday, and um, for, for fellowship, um, uh, refreshments, but also to keep celebrating Bev's life. Um, and, be, and be sure to see the beautiful pictures here uh, before you go over to the social hall. They're wonderful. I think Bev would even say, say this to us for the uh, benediction. Even at 87, life is short, and we don't have much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel the way with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. Amen. Mm -hmm.